Tell us, name, tell us your name and the name of your company. My name is Ryan Inman. I'm the uh, president of Ambient Productions here in Springfield, Ohio. I started Ambient Productions just because I had a passion for uh, live production. I went to a number of concerts and just couldn't believe all the things they could do in one day's time and just wanted to figure out how to, to do that. Uh, so starting a business was uh, not easy, but I was fortunate enough to, to have three years uh, where I did it as uh, a part-time gig on the side. So I was able to build a clientele and, and kind of have an idea of what it took to you know, turn a profit. Uh, then when I jumped and took the full-time uh, leap, that's when I kind of discovered there's a lot more that I still needed to learn as a young entrepreneur. Before I discovered the uh, SBDC, I felt kind of alone. You know, I was uh, out there just trying to figure out how to get the next job. And then once you get the job, I obviously have to figure out how to get the job done and then follow up. And just there's so many moving pieces to a business. And uh, yeah, I just felt like it was, it was on me to figure out how to get it done. Uh, so when I when I decided to leave my full time job, uh, you know, initially it's really exciting. You're you're doing this thing. You're going out by yourself. Everybody's like, oh, good job, you know. Uh, you, then you get out there and you realize, okay, it's a little harder than than I anticipated, you know. And I found myself working 70, sometimes 80 hours a week, uh, just doing everything I could just to you know get the next job. Uh, even had to do some side work, even outside of my business, just to keep keep the bills paid. Uh, I drained all my savings in less than a year and kind of found myself. Uh, pinned against a wall before I before I found the SBDC. Uh, so I was here in Springfield to meet with a client, and uh, they actually recommended that uh, I meet with the SBDC just to go through, uh, you know, my business plan and some some of the uh, things I was struggling with, see if they might be able to help. And I set up an appointment that same day. The first time Ryan came to the SBDC, he was in a really tight corner. Like he was running into some serious cash flow issues. And our first job with Ryan was just let's save his company, make sure he can survive um, this cash flow problem that he was having. So initially meeting with SBDC, I assumed it would be, you know, a one or two time type visit where they'd give me some stuff to go home and consider and then that'd be it. So how did we help Ryan? I mean, there was like so many things. Wow, yeah, it was, it had, it was a team effort. I went through uh, some uh, business banking and just ways to open up cash flow. Then we audited his website. Then we audited his social media. Uh, we went through marketing strategy. Nancy helped, Nancy Tewold helped with uh, the bookkeeping. Uh, we went through uh, website development. I uh, went through sales training. So he was not a salesman and he admitted that he had really knew nothing about it. You know, my focus was to get him in the process to get his sales operation going. We built the website. And built the website. I uh, went through some business valuation stuff when we were looking through, you know, some different growth opportunities. Uh, I, I could go on and on. I mean, it was a really extensive list of just meeting with different coaches and uh, doing homework and coming back and making sure that we were heading in the right direction. He, he had 80 meetings with us, spent over 100 hours with us. He's like top of the list in terms of people putting in work at the SBDC. I remember meetings where he would go from my meeting with him yeah. to directly with another consultant. He invested the time with us and it definitely paid off. Yeah, he got the full package. Yeah. And it man, did it pay off. Yeah, no doubt. We're actually projected to hit $2.1 million in sales this year, which is 13 times larger than it was two years ago when we started meeting with the SBDC. Uh, within those two years, we were also fortunate enough to grow the team from pretty much myself to uh, five full-time people uh, with a number of, of contractors as well to, just to keep up with some of the fluctuations in demand. So I found out recently that I actually have had uh, more hours in 2019 with the SBDC than anyone else has had. Uh, and I think really the reason was we were making progress, uh, we were making improvements, and I felt like I had almost a team around me that was keeping me sharp and growing and challenged. And uh, just that encouragement behind what was going on out in the real world uh, was working. And, and I just felt like, you know, I wanted to continue meeting until we felt that, you know, there was nothing else to improve on in that area. Honestly, the best part of being a business owner is just the, the freedom that we, you know, we have. We can decide what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it. Uh, and, you know, thankfully over time, if you, if you stick to it, you might even experience some financial freedom one day. Part of the risk that everybody takes to be a business owner is because they think they'll make more money one day. Um, and we have had paydays where I'm like, whoa, this is kind of cool. But also years of, oh crap, how am I going to pay my electricity bill? Like, 
I wish I would have had a coach uh, from the start. You know, being a young entrepreneur, I, I made a lot of decisions just kind of on, on the fly. I didn't bounce a lot off of people. And the SBDC was just such a, a well-developed group of people. I could bounce, you know, ideas off of a different group and get some, some feedback before I would make big decisions. And uh, I wish I would have had the opportunity maybe a little sooner had I known about you know, the services that they offered. So my advice to business owners out there is don't ever be afraid to ask for some leadership advice. You know, you could be in business for five, 10 years and find yourself stuck with a new challenge. Uh, just getting a different perspective from other people that have been in business and that do this for a living can be very helpful. So I think my advice would be just don't be afraid to, to make that call. It's, it's not a, you know, the best vocalists in the world have vocal coaches and, and everybody that's an expert in their field, you know, typically has a coach. So uh, it doesn't matter if you're a startup or, you know, an experienced business owner. My, my advice would be give them a call and see what they can help you out with. They're here for a reason. I think every business owner needs a business coach in the same way that we all need a, an attorney that we trust and a CPA that we trust and a bank or an insurance agent. If you don't have a business coach on your team, you don't know when you're going off the rails. It's just one more person to make sure that you are going to succeed in your business. And so it doesn't, that doesn't make you a weak business owner. It doesn't mean you don't know how to run a business. It just makes you smart because you surround yourself with smart people. And so I, I think sometimes people get hung up on, well, I know how to run a business. I don't need a business coach. Well, you're just leaving fruit on the tree unpicked when you do that. You're, you're only hurting yourself and you're kidding yourself right. if you think you don't need a coach. I think what a business coach gives to young and older op entrepreneurs is someone that will hold them accountable. Yeah. They need that because there's no one else, they're the boss, and there's no one else to hold them accountable. Especially early on. Early on. We try to nurture the business, motivate them, and say, you know what, you're going to fail. It's okay. But you can succeed if you keep going and doing the right things and get better all the time. And that's what our coaches can do for a business. Working with Ryan was awesome. I mean, I really think if I had to paint the picture of a perfect SPDC client, it looks everything like Ryan looks like. The guy was humble. He didn't come in there pretending to know everything about business. He, he was willing to learn from people. He did all the homework. If you asked him to do something, that guy would show up the next time and he did it. Uh, and so many people aren't willing to put in the effort and the time it takes to, to grow your business. That is not Ryan. Yeah, yeah, there's no question about it. Uh, I never got pushback from Ryan. Um, you know, I would give him a lot of homework. I would expect that the next time that I would meet with him that we would have these certain objectives for, for better performance. And he, he never let me down, which was good. Again, he was like a sponge just wanted to learn more and was always willing, you know, to do the work necessary. And that made a difference. <laughs> Is that my cue? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm stalling. What's the best part about running your own business and being your own boss? The mansions, the cars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was great, yeah. except for you didn't say the best part about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I get a little talky. <laughs> Salesman, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it's in the underwear.